How you guys doing? Hi, Good. Steve. How are you? Good to see you. Nice to see both of you. Um, uh, first of all, congrats on the movie. Um, uh, I have a lot to talk about with that, but during the pandemic, I've been asking everyone the same two first questions. Uh, and so here we go. What TV series would each of you like to guest star on? Uh, oh my God, there's so many. Um, well, okay, realistically, Great British Bake Off, I think, you know, that could actually happen, you know. Um, but um, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like Stranger Things, they just seem like they're having so much fun. Mm. Like, I, I love like kids on an adventure stuff. That I love that stuff. For me, uh, Succession, I'm a huge fan of that show. Um, would love to be a part of that. And and Ted Lasso, because that has been getting me through this pandemic. I mean, just thank God for Ted Lasso. Uh, what movie or movies do you think you've seen the most? Uh, it, the women uh, I've seen so many times uh, that I, 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 I got to introduce it. Uh, Turner Classic Movies uh, asked me to introduce a screening of it at... Um, what, uh, the Egyptian or I don't know it was anyway um and it was so bizarre watching it with a crowd because I'd seen it by myself and with my family so many times and with like my childhood best friends and high school best friends because I made them watch it with me um that it was bizarre it was it felt like I was in a dream or like that people were watching a dream I had like to experience an audience watching this movie that I just know backwards and forwards um was a really unique experience I've been watching a lot of like Academy nominated movies these days just because I want to catch up and see, you know, what, what everyone's talking about. And uh, I got to say, I really love Minari. And uh, and I watched Judas and the Black Messiah and the trial of the Chicago seven. I watched them back to back. And I thought it was a really it was really fascinating that we were that, that you had the same character in both movies. And it was just a really great way to examine our history. And so those were those are three memorable movies just uh, in the recent past. Jumping into why I get to talk to you guys today. One of the things that I thought was really cool about this movie is that there's no villain trying to get you guys. It's it's uh, you guys are just in a bad situation. Can you sort of talk about that aspect of the script? Yeah, I mean, early on, you know, uh, the four of us, because, you know, there's only four of us in the cast. We would so sort of talk about the dynamics in the movie. And at one point, I remember somebody I think there was like a somebody who did a set visit, a journalist who did a set visit where he didn't know the script. And he was like, well, you seem like the strongest one. So you could probably overpower these three. And we were like, oh, it's not that kind of movie. You know, like I, I love that the movie doesn't like devolve into uh, us trying to get each other and trick each other. Like that all of us have this goal of how do we survive this? How do we get through this together? Because um, I think those are the those are the most interesting um, problems where you really sort of show your, uh, you know, your character, you know, your integrity is when like, I can't just turn on someone and get angry and blame them. We're just in a terrible situation together. And obviously like the last year we have all been in a very terrible situation together and everybody really wants a scapegoat, but it's a lot harder to just go like, okay, this is nobody's fault. And we just need to come together and pool our resources and make sacrifices so that we can all get through this with the best outcomes that we can. It's a lot more like real life. When you're reading a script like this and you're just told that it's, you know, something set in space. Uh, I was, I remember reading the first act and going like, oh wait, they're low on oxygen. Is this going to be a creature feature? Is this going to be like, there's something on our ship? Uh, and, or, and then you find out that it's not. And then you, re then you ask, well, is this person going to try and murder everyone? And so they're, you know, they're all the tropes that your mind goes through as you read a script. And it was really refreshing to see that it wasn't about any of those things. It was about man versus nature. There was no villain. It was just all thoughtfully fleshed out characters. Do you guys think that the crew makes it to Mars? I think some of the crew makes it to Mars. Yes, exactly. How do you define crew? <laughs> well, I'm trying. I'm trying to say it, you know, without saying. I'm just. I'm wondering if you guys think that the crew makes it to Mars. Yeah, I assumed. Yeah. I think thanks to the actions of you know of some of our crew, the rest of the crew will make it. Got it. Uh, and then the other thing is, um, there is a really nail-biting spacewalk that takes place in this movie. 
where uh, I'm just curious if you could talk a little bit about filming that thing and then the reaction to seeing the edited footage. I'm so glad that uh, something was reading on my face other than just misery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually though, you know what? I mean, yes, obviously like we, Daniel and I have been talking about how like, it's a very uncomfortable uh, filming situation to be in a space suit and climbing these tethers because, you know, we think there might be oxygen on the other end of this craft that we have to, you know, do this spacewalk. Um, but I remember there was only one piece of footage when we first started filming the stuff in the suits um, that Joe, our director, showed to me and Daniel that we had to redo. For some reason, he wanted a different camera angle and he showed it to me. And I, I genuinely did, we talked about this, uh, uh, have that feeling of like, oh, you're really only seeing like th this, you know, like even like uh, things that you totally take for granted as a performer that like, you know, the tightness in your jaw and the, you know, the angle of your, uh, of your body language, like that I thought would read, it's like, oh, all of that gets lost. So mm -hmm. I have to just be thinking about like, eyes, nose, lips, that's it. Because I thought I was like, you know, conveying uh, my uh, my emotions and what's at stake and everything like through my performance. And then you realize like, oh, so little of it is on screen and you forget like how much you rely on uh, your body language and, you know, your neck and your jaw and stuff. And yeah, to just be limited to this much of your face was challenging. Thankfully, we had great stunt people who helped us out as well. And the, the final footage, was so much more sophisticated than what I thought it was going to be based on what I was trying to do, you know, in those scenes, because, you know, we were focused on just trying to climb properly and, and not fall down. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a nail biting sequence. On that note, I gotta go. Just gonna say congrats. Hope you guys stay safe and uh, be well. Thanks, Stephen, you. you too.